Glass cockpits and EFBs have transformed IFR flying, but managing the tasks associated with an instrument flight remains a challenge. To stay ahead of the airplane and avoid trying to juggle too many balls at once, I follow the Aviate, Navigate, Communicate sequence, as you'll see in this video. First, I take care of the airplane by completing cockpit and avionics flow checks, backed up by the appropriate checklists. Next, after loading an approach, I brief the panel to confirm that what's in the box matches the procedure. Because I confirmed runway links, notams, and other details during pre-flight planning, my approach briefing focuses on the plan for flying an approach, use of navigation sources, aircraft configuration, and other details, such as use of automation. In other words, an approach briefing is not a pro forma reading of the numbers on a chart. Okay, we are up cruising along, heading toward Hoquiam to do an ILS, practice ILS approach. Uh, we're level 4,500, navigating to stay south of uh, Shelton because of the skydive activity there. We'll shortly uh, join um, a navigation leg to fix on the approach. But before we do any of that, we're just going to take care of the airplane. So I always start with a flow check to get us ready for uh, the descent and approach. And I always start with the fuel selector. Right, you're going to go out towards Hokley and then uh, turn southbound? We're on the right tank. I'm going to try to cut quarters where I can, try to fuel make this quick, but uh, yeah. pressure is stable, that makes right. sense. Then I go through my uh, electrical switches, my lights, and other equipment. So I've got the landing light on, nav strobes and beacon are all on. I don't need pitot or prop heat today. Look at my engine and system gauges, so the engine um, gauges all look good, and the system gauges as well. So the airplane is essentially uh, in good shape for the descent um, and approach and landing. With that taken care of, we know sort of what we want to do, but I've already checked the weather at Hoquiam via ADSB. Just to get a preview, it's clear skies, light winds, uh, seven knots out of the east, but we're gonna land on runway, um, I'm gonna apply the ILS to runway 24. Altimeter's 3021. Go ahead and adjust that now. Okay, we're just approaching Shelton south of it. That's gonna work out nicely. We'll be able to turn direct to Eulis here in a moment. Now let's talk about doing an avionics flow. So I've got, I'm listening to Seattle Center, oops. And I'm gonna go ahead and put 227, which is uh, the uh, CTAF at Hoquiam in standby. I've been monitoring the uh, Olympia VOR by bearing one pointer. I'll leave it there, but I've got the Hoquiam ILS is in standby because I loaded the approach. On the nav side down here, I've got the Hoquiam VOR on my bearing two pointer, and the Olympia VOR is in standby. On the comp side down here, I have the AWOS and the CTAF at Hoquiam. 125.6300. We're squawking 1200. Right, so we have the one minute weather at Hoquiam. The only thing we had to change was the altimeter setting. Point. The winds are now showing only 5 knots. 25 one. 25 one. Thanks, air sprint 839. So now we can plan 17, 14, set approach one, two, five, point six, yep. our approach. One, two, I've five, loaded six, the up, ILS up, 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 runway 24, looking at the chart. And we're going direct to Eulis here in a moment. And then, it makes sense, we'll be straight in from there. We go to LAM, NETI, which is the final approach fix. 2100 is set as the altitude there for using VNAV. And then we'll pick up the uh, localizer 108.7, uh, which I'll go ahead and tune and start to see if we can pick up the identifier on that as we get a little closer in. We'll be going down to um, minimums of 216, which I didn't set already, but I'll set them now. If we could only get the local live it's down 580, and if we circle, it's 580 as well. And we only need uh, standard minimums of uh, one half a mile. The approach lights are not in service today but it's daytime, so uh, we don't need them, but that would increase our visibility requirement to three quarters if it were IFR, if it were IMC down there. 
We're not going to use the visual descent point. We have the phone number on the chart in case we needed to call and cancel an IFR clearance on the, uh, on the ground. And the miss on this is a climb straight ahead to go to the VOR and then hold um, as published at 2,500. We'll do a, a full stop landing, taxi back, and then uh, depart the area. I'll plan to hand fly this approach with the flight director once we get established uh, uh, going toward EULIS. We'll go ahead and put that in now, reinitiate that. We're now clear of the uh, Shelton traffic. Now this approach has a couple of interesting uh, features that um, when you're at ULIS, we actually fly a heading leg of 183 to intercept essentially the final approach course. I'm going to go ahead and activate VNAV now, and VPATH is showing. So once we get to ULIS, we can go down to 2,300, and it's on a heading leg, and we'll watch as that happens on the um, HSI. And I'll plan to do this one, as we always do on any approach with uh, approved vertical guides, or, or even advisory vertical guides for that matter, um, in our standard configuration. So about 17 to 18 inches of manifold pressure, 2,500 RPM. We'll go approach flaps as we get close to the final approach fix, and then gear down as we intercept. 110 knots down final.